it's kind of funny when you think about how long Horizon Luna Colony has been in the game as well. It's been a good while now, but to a lot of these teams, they are still more comfortable on the original maps. That will always be the way because you've seen strategies evolve over time, and in many of the esports titles, you see things that take a long time for players to realize is actually really good or really viable, you might say. So there may be still be strategies on this map that we're still not aware of, and teams are still trying to find out. So for CIS Hope, Maybe they've got something new up their sleeves and said, maybe they just go for the same old, same old CIS Hope style of play and bring this one through. But Oglis and Hungary will be looking to upset that. Let's not forget, they chose this for a reason. Well, triple tank tracer on the defense for CIS Hope. Oglis and Hungary actually going to send Shax back to the spawn room. I think he's going to change over to the Junkrat, <laughs> knowing that there's two tanks, uh, three tanks on that lineup. I love the mixing you see between Unfixed and Kenzie, because last round it was Unfixed on the tracer and Kenzie playing the Roadhog. They've now switched this over entirely. Shax is actually playing far. We'd expect Basility to be playing this, but because there's a tracer on the field, they're going to allow him to keep on that. You can always see him walking around, setting up these different health packs available for his team to fall back on. Let's see how well Shaxx is firing. We don't need to raise any questions about his Tracer. The rest of his hero pool still needs to be seen. These peppering rockets already from the high ground onto the back. Can't land them. Chow with the defense matrix blocking it out. No one's to die yet. Heng not afraid <laughs> to get in his face. face. Using the sound wave to try and push him back. But already. They're just starting to chip away at CIS Hope, but because of the healing that's available to them, that's not how you want to <laughs> play tire. this. The tire blocking the rockets is a bit of a bad news bears for Shax at the moment. But he's trying to find an avenue in. No one from August and Hungry willing to pull the trigger, waiting for the right moment to go. Just constantly these this tire getting in the way. Biggest obstacle here isn't the enemy team, it's an it's an environmental object. <laughs> well, I mean, look how, look how much they're moving around in the high ground. How are you supposed to, if he gets a kill by shooting through the hole of a tire, that's impressive. We'll give him that. But at the moment, he's really struggling to handle that. Facility got the EMP available. This could be the go button they're looking for. He's found both supports on the back line. They're not going to be able to do anything about this coalescence. Moira actually faded away from it. Very quick reactions as Shaq capitalizes with a barrage, removing Tao from the fight. Sharik with the fatty chatty onto Tonic and removes him as well. Orlison Hungry haven't got a definite foothold, but here comes the self-destruct from Emil to force everyone away and reset the fight. Unfixed, having to deal with a monkey in his face. Not got the hook to be able to use. He needs to heal up. Whole Hog available for him as well. Going to start pushing them back, but he does it straight into a transcendence. There's nothing he can do in terms of damage or misposition. Finally, will get removed by Emil as Kenzie takes out facility. No more hacks. Sound barrier available. Charge in from Ken Sharik, and he will not be able to capitalize on that as Kenzie looking for a kill. Shaq finishes him off. Epps winning the duel against Kenzie with the help of his support will make sure they stay in this game. One minute 30 to go, and they've got control of the point. Small differences between the traces. We mentioned it last map. Shaq's getting in the back, bringing down supports. On the other side, Kenzie is struggling to do the same thing. Epps has got his number, and Orgs and Hungry so far holding this point down quite well, but CIS are not going down without a fight. Well, Shaq doesn't need to fight that much. He just gives a pistol whip to Unfixed and it's all over. Here we are with A being captured. They're going to have one minute on the time back. Before they get their bonus, it's now going to five to push onto point B. It still took them a good three minutes to breach that point. And as we said just a few minutes ago on Numbani, well, you take that as, as a win, especially on something like an assault map by that first point. It's historically so hard to hold. What a great snap from Eng there. Got purple onto four members shutting down any potential push from them, but he also makes himself incredibly vulnerable by doing so. EMP onto the point, the recall coming out from Vizility. Emil taking out Sharik, who's now moved onto that Winston. Looking for a little bit more mobility in the composition from CIS Hope. The Valkyrie sustaining everyone up high. Shax trying to duel with the supports. He's got him pinned into the corner. They're having to play around the spawn gate. That's how much pressure he's applying. <laughs> he still gets dies. main anyway. What is this guy? He's an absolute demon as a mortal. Will resurrect facility in the middle of a transcendence. The supports working together again. Self-destruct hits the floor. No one to be found on the dance floor. So they'll be fine as Shaxx hugs down unfixed. Two thirds of the pie already gone with four minutes on the clock. Pulse Bomb gets thrown out into the corner. They're still going to dance around it. Look how many bodies there are on the point as Kenzie dives in to try and capitalize on the purple team. He's not there long enough. Four minutes left in the bank and Orglis complete horizon. All about the Shaq show on that second point. It felt like first one a bit more scrappy, a bit more back and forth, but on the second point especially, the fact that you can pin both of these supports in the back corner by their spawn, who don't mind being there to be honest. They've got a whole open area in front of them. They've got the sight lines they need, of course, Anna and Zen. The two support heroes are very, very dependent on that line of sight. They still manage to get themselves picked off by Shax. And again, this is the difference we're seeing between Kenzie and between Shax. And Kenzie last round, he was pretty quiet, I won't lie. He's struggling to contain the beast that is Shax at this stage.
well, CIS Hope. They're going to put both the keys in the separate consoles, put in the authenticated digit, pop open that lid and press that quad tank button. Moving on to the offense. Doesn't surprise me. They like to play these tanky compositions, and I think they can make the Slambulance work against Orglis and Hungry. Have they prepared for that? Are they ready for that? Depends what they're going to bring out on their defense to try and shut it down. We've seen some crazy responses on this map, especially to things like the quad tank. We mentioned the whole setup with the Orissa, the Junkrat, the Roadhog earlier on. In this case, they're often to go for a pretty standard setup, though, on the side of Orglis and Hungry, looking towards that Junkrat to get the boost coming through from the Mercy. Otherwise, it's full dive time for these guys. The visibility on Junk, we saw Shaxx play it on the par, but they really value Shaxx on the Tracer, so they're still going to be forcing some changes up. Is that a meal just sat there? Playing, he's, he's my spirit animal. Every game I play, I do the same thing. You just sit down and start playing video games, man. Oh, games also within spamming games. spamming Happy Halloween. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't be that guy. <laughs> Neil, you are that guy. Back into the game, unfixed. Oh, see, I hope. They're changing it up. The switcheroo. <laughs> the old switcheroo. They've somehow unpressed the panic button and are going back to a rational composition. As Unfix will go onto that Farah with the support from Eng and Kenzie going back at it again. He wants another attempt. He wants another shot at the heavyweight champion of the world, Shax. It's quite interesting because both teams are going towards very similar styles of comp here. Even though they aren't identical, what both are looking to do is get the ult charges down onto those key members. They're looking for a trigger to go for the dive. That's why you have the Farah and you have the Junkrat setting things up. As soon as the support gets hit by a direct rocket or a grenade from the Junkrat, that is your go trigger. You dive in and you try and bring down a crucial member or two to force them to reset. The pressure that Unfix oh, is able to one. apply, finding Immortal eventually after peppering those choke points for so long. It provides an opening for CIS Hope to walk into the point. They're still making this point with quad tank pressure and quad tank speed, but they're doing it on a composition of their own. Quad tank speed. It's an interesting one to think about. <laughs> but dude, they, they typically cap it very quickly with yeah, the ambulance. True, true. They make it work. Very, very quick, you got to say, coming through with the Tracer. Kenzie on that point pretty much immediately while the rest of his team was just like, well, hey, you guys have fun. And look at the potential wipe they've got coming through here. They've almost got Aang coming up with the Valkyrie, and Unfixed almost has his ultimate as well. Now, it's going to be a bit of a scrap to try and secure this final point. I think Orcs and Hungry, Vazility, going across to the Soldier gives them a lot of space to consume, in a sense. They can spread themselves out and not find themselves too pinned down by Unfixed. And he's got to be very, very careful as to where he chooses to use that Rocket Barrage. Now they're going to move in. 99% on Unfix. Going to have the barrage available. They have seven minutes to play with this, and Shaq's already winning out that first duel, so one piece of the puzzle missing. The barrage hoping to level it up. Epson Facility. They're going to be the victims of this aerial strike as the Valkyrie's going to be popped. Shaq finding Immortal. No more heals out for them as Shaq answers onto main. Resurrection brings him back, and Unfix drops down low to find Shaq as he takes him off the field. Self-destruct on the point, no one to be found. They're gonna answer it again with one of their own. Falls into the spawn room immediately. The pressure from the rockets comes back, keeps them away. Who's on the point? It's a lone tonic, hiding behind that bubble, playing around it well, diving onto the back line. Main's gonna get the support he needs, but Shax follows up to make sure he gets the kill. Primal Rage, knocking everyone back in a meal, dashing into the supports. He's defense matrixing everything he can. Just gonna jump off here, gets the D-Mech, he's vulnerable. Facility with a tactical visor, it's gonna shut Unfix down, he's forcing himself back. Nice use of Concursive Blast to reposition. This is August and Hungry, shutting down the push. I think CIS need to change off a bit here because as weird as it sounds with the comp they've got, their finishing power is just not there. They are not getting enough damage down to prevent the, the constant respawns coming through from Orglus, which means the tanks, it means the supports can get back in and store the point until enough members are there to go for this kind of pushback. And rightly so, they swap things out. Kenzie going towards the Widowmaker, Unfix back on to that, that patented Sombra that we keep on speaking about. He has been world class on this in previous weeks. Norgus is hungry. They're committing to a full dive here. They're putting facility onto that Genji. So they're going to be diving straight onto the back line. And Kenzie, if he's not smart enough or he's not aware enough, he could have both these DPS on the back line as well as the Winston. Nice little micro there with a the flick back to make sure he doesn't get headshotted. But the support from CIS Hope is there to keep Kenzie alive. And immediately, Shax is just going to go and capitalize on that new reposition. He finds Sharik as well. That's a double kill for him. Facility cutting through the back line. CIS Hope, they've tried something new and they've been absolutely dismantled for it. They have, but they had tons of time to make it happen. They have still got time to experiment here. And rightly so, Kenzie is like, guys, 
Realistically playing this Widow, I'm not going to be able to deal with Jax on this Tracer. I need to go and match him. So once again, they realize, okay, that isn't going to work. Let's change it out completely. Tracer and Soldier, now their next attempt. I wonder how many other rotations we'll see coming through. Ciao. Very close to bait me there. I thought he was going to go for the Orisa. He locked it <laughs> in and changed back nah. over to the Diva. Orisa, a very different play style to what you expect from Chow to be able to pull out. It was only because he didn't want to get himself caught while he was selling mini, mini Diva forming out to try and farm the up. So just had to switch over for that. Aang is going to pop the Valkyrie there. They're going to try and make this work. Kenzie still peppering them from the outside. A lot of Orgles and Hungry are playing around that bubble provided by Winston. They're treating it almost like a Reinhardt shield when it's available to them and more power to them to negate the damage. Nano boosted, Animal was in the field, lightning through everyone, but he can't deal with the transcendence. Sharik actually going to shut him down despite him getting that nano boost from Immortal. So now they have the advantage, self destruct in a tight space. Here's the Dragon Blade, he knows they're all there. Transcendence not available for the main, needs to be cut through, but he's getting pocketed by Mercy. <laughs> it only takes three slashes to do it. He won't be able to find any more as Ep brings out Eng and now Vazility in that bubble, going to get healed up. But all and hungry, they're burning through so much time as CRS said hope. I love how we could have taken your statement there if it only takes three slashes, either as literal or sarcastic, because it literally did take three. But it took three <laughs> slashes to kill a Zenyatta. That's how hard the pocket coming through was. And to be honest with you, that's most of the blade from Vazility being focused onto him exclusively. However, they knew that he was a key part of that, of that attack coming through um, from CIS Hope. So shot him main down, it's never going to be a bad idea. But let's look now at the ultimates coming up for CIS. They're finally starting to see some yield on Unfixed and Kenzie going for their swaps onto the Tracer and to the Soldier. This could be their big go time. The only two things they're missing are their support, support ultimates. They've been pinned in the corner, so they're just enabling Aulus and Hungry to use it. what AoE they they have available to them in terms of just that Winston Lightning and that unfixed opening up the attack visor. Facility already the first victim forces that recall immediately from Shax. He's gonna go back in, but there's a Discord all on top of the Winston Chow. Kenzie, they're picking up kills as well as they're on the point. Two thirds captured. They just need the, the final guy. slice. They're jumping back on. Transcendence from Epps will stall it out. The self destruct. Not going to be able to take it away. He's just very stationary. But while Epps is there, the rest of his team is dying. They need to jump on in some kind of coordinated movement. Epps going down. They're all on the point. They're just throwing bodies and drip feeding everything to keep it alive. They are, but it's still a bit of a clean house coming through from CIS Hope. The kill feed is entirely blue, and they will pick down these last few members. Vazility. I was about to say Vazility and Shax, but he goes down as well. They're switching for the stall, but it's too late. Two minutes, 14 seconds for CIS Hope. Doesn't this feel so much like Numbani again, Tris? We can have another tie, and we don't want that because <laughs> we've had one tie, so it's effectively neutralized one map score. So the maximum amount of maps there are effectively to get points from is four. So if Orglis and Hungry win this, they can then tie at one apiece. But if we lose another draw, you've only got three available maps to get points from, so it's unlikely we'll see that tiebreaker. Turns into that best of three that I think we all somewhat fear, but based on how these first couple of rounds have gone, I don't expect this to end the same way as Numbani. It would be very, very unlikely to see Orcus and Hungry held for another full hold. It did take them about three minutes the first time round, but their second point cap was incredibly quick. So CIS hope they'll be putting everything onto their defensive round to try and keep Orcus and Hungry at bay on that first point, but it's their attacking round first, and Orcus and Hungry didn't have the easiest time holding them back. So. I was going to say, you've got to give me something tanky at the moment, and I think CIS hope we're going to run with just that. They're not committing to quad tank, Attack. thankfully. We don't want to see that. None of that. Get out of here. Not yet. Go with the triple tank. Oh, no, they are going to quit the quad <laughs> tank. <laughs> Well, no, they did this before and they didn't fall into it. But let's focus on what Augus are running. We you know what they're messing running with us now. at this point. They pretty much are. They know how much we hate Quad Tank. But Augus <laughs> and Hungry, let's focus on what they've got for us to play with. So, Vizility on the Junkrat, Shaq's on the Tracer, and it's pretty staple for Augus and Hungry throughout the rest of their composition. Very much so. So, more of the same from those guys. Then there was some concern last time around how they just couldn't deal with Kenzie basically sitting on the point like being guys. This is free capture for me right now, and you're not dealing with me. Now they've got Shaxx on the Tracers to try and deal with him. So expect more of those 1v1 duels between the Tracers, trying to keep each other quiet, but let's not forget how much work Unfix did as well. He's back onto the far end, running a similar composition on their offense. It actually worked out very well for them on the first attempt, but they're getting a lot of pressure on the dive. Oh, Immediately, my. Emil goes up into the air and removes the wingman for the Unfix. He's flying solo. Main getting a double onto Shaxx on Tonic is surprising, as Vizility will finally shut him down. But throwing three people for one support and you lose two of them, that's not a trade I want to take. Damage boosted Emil is never a nice prospect to face when you are at mercy up in the air with nowhere to go. Last time around, it was actually unfixed. He got the opening kill. He brought down Immortal's Mercy and prevented that res or any of the verticality that Mercy brings to this first point from really being on side. That's how they managed to get the win. So I like that they were more aggressive in their response and the Orgus were like, right, we're going to take it to them this time and prevent them from being given all this room. But that means we've got to put ourselves at risk and rightly so, they paid the price. 
where it forces confined spaces to be avoided by August and Hungry, knowing that the AoE from the rockets can burn through them. So coming out of that back path, not so hot for them. Shaq's having difficulty dealing with Unfix with the aerial advantage as main removing from the fight for the second time in this attempt. They've got control of the point. They're trying to force him on. A sticky onto Tonic will remove him as well. They're going to get to point A, and they're going to have a little bit of time to play with to move on to point B. I'm very impressed at how quiet they managed to keep Shaxx and all of that as well. Like, unfixed, almost instinctively, he was like, hey, there's going to be a Shaxx somewhere below me. Fired a couple of rockets, and Shaxx immediately had to pull back and wait for some for the health pack to come back online before he could rejoin the fight. So really, the first time we've seen CIS Hope dismiss him and just said, we're going to focus on the other five members of this team. We're going to take this point, and we're going to keep on pushing. They've got one minute to go to try and capture this second point. And based on how it took them a good six minutes last time, I'm not too positive. This time, they've got more ultimates to play with more rapidly. Already, the Valkyrie's been popped and into the sky. You see a Riptire. A little bit wasted by Vizility. He's going to change over to the Soldier, hopefully apply some pressure to Unfix. You see, in a transcendent self-destruct goes up. Can he find somewhere to hide in time? Perfectly timing on the jumping to get himself back up into the air. Vizility, he's a victim run straight from above as Epps will be removed. But Emil finally gets the answer. Gets a D-Mech as a little bit of a consolation, but you want to be killing those kills as well. Tonic looking to clean up with the Primal Raid. Bashing everyone around and Mortal brings Epps back into the fight. He had a choice between Vizility or the Zenyatta. He chose Zenyatta. He wants that more support here. Oh, is that a stick? Ooh, back up. Close. No stick. Close, but no cigar, Desertu. 15 seconds remaining. Unfix has gone onto the Samba. Kenzie's gone down. So is Sharik. They're going to be missing them for this final push. They're going to have to stall with only one tank, and it's Chow. Self destruct. Might be able to buy them enough time. Resurrection coming out. Defense Matrix was there to keep them alive. So they're going to bring it into a 5v6. Jumping onto the point. Self destruct there. Bubble right next to it. Cuts off a lot of angles of destruction as Tonic will remove Chow while he's D met. They're missing it. Primal Rage. Onto the field. Unfixed having to back away as Emil dives into the back line. Kenzie getting a lot of attention. Unfixed is fine, but Tonic takes out Mercy. And Main is missing. Unfixed gets removed. This is all coming up to August and Hungry. They're going to cut down CIS Hope with a three-point max. Not the worst result for CIS at least getting the first point, but you give four minutes over to August and Hungry. And like we said earlier on, they took a lot of time to get the first point, but their second cap was very, very quick. In this case for CIS, they have to full hold on the first point for four minutes. It's basically like a fresh new round of Horizon Lunar Colony with August and Hungry on the attack. I don't really think you put too much weight on one second, if I'm completely honest, but who knows? Maybe it comes down to the final second. It could potentially come down to overtime as well, based off of the nice, plain and layman's layout you gave us there, Des. I got a feeling that August and Hungry are going to run away with this one, get themselves that first map point of the game. Because four minutes stall on first point, it's a tall order, even for a team like CIS Hope. Tall order, but they've done it pretty well. Numbani, three and a half minutes with their triple DPS setup. Last round, three minutes here on Horizon Lunar Colony. Problem with that is it's trending backwards. Three and a half minutes to three. Now they've got to jump up to four minutes and a second to hold. And then be able to win that final fight that August and Hungry will no doubt try and, try and contest. Shaq's going back over once again to that Farah, though. And I remember saying previously that, does this guy play anything except Tracer? We've seen him on Widow once or twice. Definitely showing us that he can at least bring Farah to the fore, that his team have enough trust in him to bring it out here in such a crucial moment. So, uh, he's been playing Tracer, Farah, and Junkrat on certain maps as well. I don't want to throw questions about how deep his hero pool is, but when you can, when Tracer is so important in the meta and you can literally rely on being a Tracer specialist, it's not a problem with him being able to run He's it. a projectile DPS stuck in the Tracer's body, basically. <laughs> it's the way things are going. That's the trend we're yeah, seeing. I don't know if you can make that <laughs> assumption so much, but Vizility opting to go for the Sombra, so he's going to set up that forward operating base again. But it's triple tank from CIS Hope. They're going to rely on Kenzie being on that Tracer. And he doesn't have to deal with the Shaq's jewels. Instead, he has to somehow deal with the aerial pressure coming out from Afara. As Vizility, he's set up the FOB. And now he's looking in to go and find some victims and return to safety. Unfix getting a hook onto Tonic. Already removing a tank lineup from Orglis. So they're going to have to fall back for now. Maybe get a few more chips of damage for some ult charge. This is where I have a few questions coming through for Vizility. Like, a Sombra will never do as much impact as a Tracer will when you're coming one versus two against supports. It's not what she's there for. They're relying very much so on getting the EMP off and then having Shaxx ring through the barrage. If they can line those two things up, there is nothing to stop two or three kills easily going across to August and Hungry, and Kenzie has already gone. Tag onto Kenzie as he was strafing across the point, and they're keeping everyone into the back corner. He's got the barrage available. Vizilis is coming in. He's yep. got EMP. Here's the combo you were talking about, Des. Where's the barrage? He's not in position for it. Maybe it'll be for follow up damage, but they've removed August and Hungry from the point. Barrage in the top. Chow's going to block it out, and there's a shield there as well. Nice return. 
Poor point, timing point by Shaq. They've only got a point of it at the moment, though, and they're missing a crucial DPS. Here's the return from CIS Hope. Sound Barrier brings it back in, keeps everyone nice and topped up. You can see they're already struggling to do it. Immortal on the outside, providing healing onto the interior. Oh. Sticky onto Immortal! Kenzie's not one to be outdone as he takes out the support. And Shaq, he's going back to the Tracer. He needs to put himself back on the map. Rightly so. I think their combo really didn't pay too many dividends for them last time. Evidently not, because they didn't manage to catch the full thing. They did get a third, but they're acknowledging that if they can bring down these supports in the bat line, it has been August and Hungary's key to winning consistently. Bring down main, bring down Eng, and they win the fight pretty much guaranteed. Two minutes remaining for August and Hungary to just get that first cap. They need that to keep alive and at least draw on this map and not force map point for CIS Hope going into Dorado or Junkertown, but more about that later as they move on to the point. Emil, he's got a self-destruct, he's going to put it into the back. There's the EMP, a lot of the team, they haven't got the ability to keep him alive, but there is a whole hog from Unfit keeping him out into the back line. No. Finds no one but Shax removing main. There's another self-destruct on the field. Shax now being removed by Chow. Emil turns it back around onto Eng. Valkyrie's been popped to bring him back into the fight. Tonic, Kenzie, they're going to have a little bit of a tussle and Kenzie's going to lose that one. Shax removing Sharik. Orbis and Hungry, they've got the man advantage on the point. Only one person remaining. They're going to go down. They're going to cap and they're going to force out at least a draw on Horizon. At least a draw. Imagine two in the same series. There would be no better way of showing just how close these two teams are. However, we've got a bit of a way to go before we get there, Trid. One minute 40 on the clock, and all they've got to do is catch this, fir but this first third. That's a weird one to say. The first third of point B. They've got one minute 30 to do it from the high ground position. They got themselves a pulse bomb and nearly the EMP to boot from Vazility. Can they get a nice combination off of CIS Hope? Need to put out a solid defense. Zillity looking towards that EMP once again. They know what they want to try and do here. They know how they want to make it work. I think based on how long they're trying to make this first engagement go, they get two chances at this. And Epps has already found unfixed. That could be the go trigger. Well, the EMP has been used as well. That's definitely slammed it straight into the console and it's not being unwedged. Epps again onto Sharik, removing Winston. And Shax hiding around the corner looking for someone to pick off. It's August and Hungry yet to get themselves on the point. Kenzie still dancing around. Discord Orb going to remove Chow from the fight and Shax is there for the follow-up. Unfix on the back line playing the Widowmaker. I thought Kenzie was the Widow Specialist. It's Unfix struggling to get himself an impact but immediately he gets Shax in his face. Moves back around. The point's being contested halfway to the victory point for Orglis and Hungry as Kenzie still dancing around. Most of his shots blocked by the defense matrix but he got Shark in there with a Discord Orb. Epps is easy pickings for him. Pulse Bomb gets thrown out, finds Epps and moves into the fight. Chow, removing Tonic, Immortal, brings back Epps into the fight as Unfix still on this back line, uncontested apart from when Shaq got involved. CIS Hope, they've fought back Orglis and Hungry and now here is squeaky bum time for Orglis and Hungry. They've got the final chance to do it. That turned into more of one mega engagement and one small one that's now going to come through in the final 10 seconds. But Orglis and Hungry don't have time to set themselves up. This is going to be one big final scrap here and it's going to be messy. Tonic has to touch, but no, Shaq's going to go in there first. Is he coming in? Headshotted by Unfix. He used the tactical infrasight to take him out of the fight. And Shax gets the D mech onto Chow. They're dancing onto the back line. Two kills so far for Orglis and Hungry. Sharik answering onto Tonic. Unfix still unanswered on the back line. Main putting out the damage. Gets a tag onto Emil. Removes that mech, healing up the rest of his team. How many members of Orglis and Hungry are left to fight this? They're being discord, they're being stored out. EMP comes out, Emil removed from the fight. Vazility takes out Kenzie, but Main with the double kill onto both DPS as Sharik removes Immortal. <laughs> Dez, we've got ourselves another draw in this series alone. Imagine going into the fourth map and the scoreline is one to zero. You have not seen that anywhere yet. And finally, of all teams, CIS Hope, Hope. <laughs> right? These guys are the draw kings at this point. Every single draw we have seen in European contenders so far has been from these guys. It's madness, honestly. This series alone has produced 100% more draws than what we've seen <laughs> in the entire season so far. That is how close this is. And I'm so glad we get to see it. Group A and Group B break out the echo chambers of fighting each other. And we can try and get a little bit of a litmus test of how hotly contested both of these groups are. And you can kind of see based on these two teams playing just how close said litmus test actually is. <laughs> two draws in one series? Insane. Got to be a bit of a negative bugbear here for a few seconds. Vizility... First map, reason why they lost is because of him getting picked off on the entry fights. Final few fights there, you're, tra you're tra charging straight onto a point as the first guy there when you've got a Widowmaker sat there with the ultimate active. Worst idea in the world, gets himself picked off. EMPs haven't been too effective. I'll ask some question marks around that Sombra pit, to be honest with you.
Well, questions will have to remain unanswered. For now, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to bring you map number four of this fantastic series. Welcome back to Overwatch Contenders Europe. I'm Trid. This is Dez. We're about to jump into map four of this series where we've already seen two draws on two separate maps between CIS Hope and August and Hungary. We're going to go to Dorado. That's fantastic news for August and Hungary. They're undefeated on this map. And this is map point effectively because if there's two ties, this becomes a best of three in terms of scores. And of course, with it being 1-0 to CIS Hope at the moment, that means if they win this map, they take the series and progress into the semi-finals. However, Dorado, as you say, is definitely a map favourite so far for August and Hungary. Feeling pretty confident on it, but they haven't yet faced Kenzie's Widowmaker. And I keep on speaking about this Widowmaker because I want to see Shax try and take him down. I want to see that duel take place. And finally, we may finally see it happen. Well, there's Dorado. It could all come down to this. CIS Hope, one map away from the semi-finals. They could be going to LAN. August and Hungary, they win this. They force out the fifth map, but we won't get that illustrious sixth map control. We'll have to settle for the fifth map control. Very keen to see what gets pulled out here, because whether it's been Dorado or Junkertown, we've seen things as wild as the pirate ship strategy actually carry teams like Aganti all the way through to the third point. So teams have made it work. We've seen Widow, we've seen Faras versus Widows, which is the weirdest matchup in the world, but teams still find ways to make this kind of stuff work. So really, you're looking here towards something for CIS Hope that's probably going to revolve around Kenzie at some stage picking the Widow. For August and Hungry, they're going to want to try and find a way to close him down if he opts towards that pick. It looks like they're running double shield quad tank and setting up defensively by the fountain in market. I don't think I've seen this, especially in Contenders Europe. Arissa seems to be a thing for DPS players. Davin, Giganti again. He played it pretty much exclusively on Junkertown. It was a bit of a surprise, and you've got to say, sometimes you look at Orissa, uh, her bullets have travel time, but if you land them, the damage can actually be quite surprising, and she's, of course, very safe. Look how far they're playing up there. They're hiding in this house. Full I hole, think boys. they want to try and full hold oh, them. Oh, they've been spotted, though. Uh, the Hanzo recon arrow. They know exactly where they are. They're going to start peppering them with rockets. This could go sideways for CISO very quickly, unless they can reposition and get set up, but they're playing around the house. They're using the pressure, but the fact that August know they're in this position to try and force them back in the payload. Not merely moving, because they can still keep contesting it from this position to stop them from going in. Shax for some kind of kill, but unfortunately Kenzie's going to keep him out of there. You'd think that you'd be able to build an ultimate very quickly here for Shax with all those tanks in a confined space, and I expect him to get ripped tired very soon. But here they come. They're emerging from the building. Shax 
Getting the first kill onto Kenzie. Riptire, it's available. Going onto the back line. Double kill as he finds Sharik and Eng. So this quad tank composition being played so aggressively has gone a little bit south for CIS Hope. As Sharks dominates the kill feed as well as Eps. One of those moments to see us for it's probably like someone turn the air conditioning up in here because when you've got double rockets layering down, grenades from Shaxx, rockets from Vazility, that is not going to be a fun time to be inside that room. And rightly so, they get shut down, but they did manage to burn a full minute. So it means now they can go for this full fight once again in the market and they find themselves with three minutes to try and defend against rather than going for that once it actually just straight pushes through without any kind of contestation. Triple tank Widow, so a bit of the best of both worlds for you, Des. You can see Kenzie's Widowmaker. But also Facility, he's going on to a Widowmaker of his own. I think they expected to see that rather than commit to the Farah. Coalescence being used, burning through. Need to get an eyeball on this fight, but will Facility be able to nail the shot? And he's going to have to leave unfixed as Emil's got that one down to himself. Healing coming out from main, but Shaq is going to run through him regardless. End with a disengage. Keep him back. And there's Kenzie removing his head. It doesn't matter. August and Hungry still going to roll on this point. They do, and a good start from Orglis so far, despite being held for that initial one minute, it never really felt like it was a losing fight. And this first point, sure, it takes them two minutes. CIS once again doing the job of at least stalling the timeout for a short while. Now the real question comes in when we start seeing these Widow duels around the second point. This is where all the action goes down for Widows. It's where we always see them either one side pop off or no sides pop off and they have to change. But you can understand why Shaq's opted to stay on the Tracer. He's playing out of his skin today on that hero. Why would you force him onto something else that he's not as comfortable on? Speaking of comfort picks, Kenzie's on the Widowmaker while Unfixed has moved on to the Tracer now. So a different duelist to contend with Shaxx. Will he be as good? I don't think so, because I think Kenzie's there for a reason. And this is where the limited hero pool from CIS Hope comes into play. Let's see if they can stop them any further. It's all about the stall tactics it feels for the CIS for the most part. Kenzie, with that ultimate online, will at least deny August and Hungry the opportunity to push around the corner. Vizility has got the same though. He's looking to try and find Kenzie to enable them to push forward a bit quicker. Still, the payload being held on this corner. Epps removing Kenzie and Main takes out Shaq to Vizility. Taking out Eng as well, and you can see he's got the high ground position on top of Church. That's really advantageous for August and Hungry as Emil. Short, sorting out the dive from Sharik. Going to remove him from the field. And now he's got that self-destruct available as they move round the front of the church and into the home stretch of stage two. You get kind of two kinds of Zenyatas. You get the ones that are more defensive, all about those transcendences on their side. You get guys like Epps who push all the way forward and use those transcendences aggressively. And then you get more guys like Epps who go for duels against <laughs> Widowmakers. That is never a good idea, but he still managed to get the headshot down onto the enemy Widow and win that fight out for his team. Just so happened as well that Vizility was there ready to bring down the Mercy as she came in for the res. So you've got double sniper, but one of them is a, tri one's a Zenyata. This is mad. Kenzie removing Immortal from the sky after he used Valkyrie. And now Shaxx removing Kenzie from the fight. They're jumping onto the payload. You can always see Chow is in full retreat on that Diva. He's not going to be able to hold up this position. Unfix turning a favor onto Epps. And they're still dancing around this point as Orglas will get this cap. They just need to get a couple more kills. Main coming out with the stall. Shaq taking out Eng with that pulse bomb. Unfix moving forward. He's going to have to move back. Orglas and Hungry, they've been forced back, but they had to burn a transcendence to do it. Yeah, it was a good burn from Sharik there, jumping him in the primal rage. Enough to delay the point that his team could catch up and they go for a defense. Finally, War of the Widows comes into effect and Kenzie brings down Vazility. And now unfixed around the front of the church. Got a pulse bomb available. Kenzie can pop the infrasites. Give him that extra information to know where he should be pathing to find the most valuable targets. Now Unfix is going up against Shax when he does this fight. He's got a little bit of help coming in from Chow. He's going to have that defense matrix to block a lot of the action. Kenzie, he knows. Don't, don't you dare don't, don't, don't do it, Facility. Don't. Oh. There's a shield. He's okay. He popped it behind the shield. Fantastic. Oh, and you can see the aggression. Epps again with those shots from the Orbs of Destruction nearly taking off Kenzie's head. Maybe he took off his ear there, I think, as well. It's scary how much he's getting down, but the same again. Shax. Secret he's Agent Shax. You know what he's looking for. Who's he, he going to take? Is he going to take the Widow? They don't know he's there yet. Oh, they do, they do. <laughs> no, he's getting <laughs> double pocketed. They're not going to be able to take him out. They have to change focus. If he can ch switch between targets fast enough, he might be able to get a kill. But because he's being double pocketed by support, there's not really anything to be found that alone Shax can do. He's going to move back around to the outside. Chow's exposed. Discord going to make sure he goes down. Sharik, he's running low. Getting a top up from Immortal, but it's not enough. There's Emil, Tonic. They're all going to dance through, and Shax leading the charge. They're going to get this and go to stage three. Really smart stuff. And this is actually what we saw CIS do onto August and Hungry on the first point of Numbani. You essentially send one member in there as a distraction. That was Shaxx. And when both supports and the Widow are looking at him, 
Everyone else can dive in and basically melt them whilst their attention is diverted elsewhere. Shax is doing such a fantastic job of distracting as many members as he can to give his team the freedom to act. That's what they need to do to close out this map. He just spawned Camp Chow, walked him back to his new spawn room and de-mech him in the process. Today, without a mech on Diva, he's gone back to the room. He's going to have to change. So nice little bit of play to stall out even more time from CIS Hope. Sticky onto both supports. Eng only going to be the victim of that one. He dives down from the high ground onto Chow, removes him yet again. And Main, he's been answering back. He's been a little bit aggressive for his Enyata, but he can't handle a 2v1 against a Winston and a Tracer. The payload yet to be disrupted by CIS Hope. Tao's health bar went from like 550 to zero like that. Tonic jumping in with both supports, giving him some assistance as well. It was just so much for him to handle that that was gone immediately. And Tao, or Chow even feeling very bullied right now, I imagine, isn't being given much freedom himself to operate in Shax. You can see why he wants all the focus to be on Xiao, because it gives him so much freedom to operate on these supports in the bat line. Well, they jump nice and high to remove Vazility. Not going to be able to use that sniper angle he had, but his grapple hook will be back up soon enough to get back up there. Valkyrie being popped by Immortal, going to go straight up into the skybox and Unfix being shredded by Shaq. Transcendence coming in just a little bit too late as Aang will bring him back into the fight. But he's punished with a pulse bomb and denies the resurrection. Unfix, he comes out. He manages to get his Dragon Blade off and he takes out Epps. Where's the second kill? There's no follow-up for him as Shax is still alive, being healed up by Immortal, who's just got himself into a nice position as they're diving to the spawn room to force everyone back. Who's on the payload? Why isn't it in motion? They're too busy dealing with Sharik, who's in the primal range. It's Unfix, cleans up Tonics and Shax. Somehow, with 45 seconds left to go, CIS Hope stop August and Hungry. We've always had questions over Unfix Genji in the past, but what a time to bring it out and make an impact. Immediately, those switches back over to the Sombra, something we see a lot more comfort out of this guy. We mentioned earlier on, some of these DPS players, we have questions around one or two of their heroes. Genji is always the one that we look at on Unfixed and go, is this the most efficient pick for you right now? In that case, clearly the answer was yes, but he feels a lot more confident on this Sombra. That double flank from him and Kenzie should be able to at least keep Vazility or Shaxx quiet. Well, he's got 85%, nearly close to that pulse bomb. 15 seconds remaining for the full completion. A hack coming out, Facility removing unfixed. And now Shax with that pulse bomb. He's sitting on main, doesn't even need to use it. Taking out one of the support. Self destruct going <laughs> high, simultaneously being mirrored. Any victims to be found? They traded each other <laughs> when they're outside of the mechs. They knew exactly what was going, neutralizing it. Divas no longer on the board. Overtime being forced out, three people keeping it in motion. Immortal brings back a meal. He will have that remake to keep him alive. Overtime being forced out. Shaq uses that pulse bomb onto main. Immortal takes to the skies yet again. Here's a Dragon Blade from Vazility dashing onto the back line. But Chow, he's dashing onto the back line of his own and causes him to come all the way back. Cuts through him as Epps gets the DMX. Shaq's taking out Aang. Five people in motion in overtime. Orgless and Hungry complete Dorado. You know what? This is heading towards Frid. No overtime left. The opportunity now lies with CIS Hope. Can they complete and match them? Or do we find ourselves in the situation where they, can fully, where they can fully complete it out and win? Or if they find themselves falling short and we go through to that fabled fifth map? And it'd be really interesting to see because teams can opt into the Oasis fifth map. So it doesn't have to play Ilios. But Ilios, as we mentioned earlier, they're both undefeated on in group stage matches. So that would be a tough one to decide between August and Hungry and CIS Hope. And in order for that to happen, CIS Hope will have to pick their second map of the series because the way the picks work, if you draw the map, the pick, the person who picked the previous map that you drew on will then pick. You basically essentially pick maps until you win one. So August and Hungry have been determining all of these maps apart from the first stage of Nepal. Now, first stage of Nepal came as a surprise. We said it ourselves. We thought it would be Ilios as the first map of the day. Neither side opts in towards it instead of looking towards the more unexpected. And August and Hungry, they're the guys with the work to do now. They've got to hold CIS Hope at bay. And so far, what they're bringing out to the table, more of what we've seen from them previously, going towards the hybrid dive, once again bringing the Soldier and the Mercy to the party. Not going to go for the crazy house strategy we just saw CIS Hope employ a few minutes ago. They're going to keep the high ground. You typically see both the tanks up here to begin with to try and stop anyone getting an aggressive positioning with the advantage, the likes of Widowmaker, and also you're close enough to be able to hit a far if she's in the air as well, which is always handy to remove them from the fight. You're going to be holding this one, and Vazility on this soldier, it's been a consistent hero for August and Hungry, and it's really paid dividends earlier on in the series. 
They're coming out the gate here. CIS Hope with Kenzie on that Widowmaker once again. That leaves Unfixed to pick up the pieces on the Tracer. However, again, even as good as Unfixed might be, he's got to stack up against Shax. And it feels so far no one has really been able to do so. Can you imagine if it comes down to August and Hungry versus British Hurricane? What kind of match that would be on Tracer? Incredible. It would be insane. But August and Hungry have got to get over this obstacle first. CIS Hope still 1 0 up. If they win this map, that's the end of it. It's basically a best of three at this stage. Keeping himself onto this Widowmaker, moving around the side, scoping on the angle. There's two tanks in his face. Not even Unfix can get through that gap on the Tracer, so they're just going to have to keep forcing this cart through. Get it forward enough so you can play along the bridge and hopefully pop off like that. But Shax, he's got Kenzie's number. Pops in, pops out. That's all he needs to do as he's starting to tag with Sharik. He's the one to draw first blood on this map as Immortal. He's going down as well, so both the supports isolated. CAS Hope, they've rolled over Orglis and Hungry. Not enough return kills coming. The payload moving firmly into market. Yeah, Shaq's basically left on his own here to go for the big fight, but it's not going to pay off. Emil is also still around, and he manages to get the return kill. But Chow is straight in there to bring down his counterpart, leaving Shaq to flee the scene as Unfix pursues him. Pretty easy first fault for CIS Hope, and they're still a minute ahead of where Orgus and Hungry were at this stage last round. That was some really good covering fire from Epps. It forced Unfix to think twice about poking around that corner because he knew the orbs of destruction were coming his way. He essentially saved Shaq's life because he didn't want to give up his own life. Kenzie taking pop shots from the distance. He's now got a playing field in terms of the market. It's Unfix and Sharik, they're rolling over on kills. Not even a single return from Orgus and Hungry. CIS Hope, they've tasted blood. The piranhas have started to swarm and they're going to decimate them all the way down to the bone. Orgs and Hungry at least managed to stall out slightly and if you can just basically throw bodies at the point on that first point, the doors have to open, the payload has to push through. It's not a bad idea just to throw whatever you can there unless you're donating alt charge for no good reason. But every second counts it feels at this point. Getting themselves down to about 2 minutes 20 seconds, it was only about 15 seconds sooner than what Orgs and Hungry did. So, so far quite even you might say. And let's not forget, CIS Hope on their defensive round here, they held down incredibly well on the second point for a good amount of time. Shaq's already fighting with Unfixed in that high ground. They're just bobbing and weaving in and out of church. You can see him in the background as the rest of the tanks dive forward, self-destruct, going up into the air. Valkyrie already been popped out by Immortal to keep everyone nice and healthy, but he's confined to the space of the church, so half the team isn't getting the benefit. Now, they layer the Transcendence on top, even while the Valkyrie's being used, it's being responded with mains, Transcendence of his own pulse bomb into the middle of him, burns through it, Kenzie being taken down, can't find the kill onto Eng as Main will take him out, so Shaxx being taken out for his aggression to try and stop the resurrection. What can Kenzie do with his newfound life? Lines up the shot, oh! immediately takes out Facility, he's already paid his team back for the benefit of bringing him back from the dead. Absolutely did, and this is exactly where we saw CIS Hope manage to hold Orcus and Hungry last time, but so far, more success being shown by CIS, and they are still tunneling their way on towards this second point. Kenzie so far, big picks onto Vizility, but Shax is still being an absolute nightmare in this bat line. And now Unfix has got a bit of a flank, gonna get some free ult charge by hitting up the supports. Forces an immediate reaction from Emil to Defense Matrix. All that damage coming out, Infrasites, Available the for the click. time room. And there's the one click from Unfix to take out Immortal. Getting a lot of pressure. We need to back off, get some healing from somewhere because Shaxx is on his tail. Emil with another kill, removing Sharik. He's been playing very defensively on the back line. And it's Main. Takes out Shaxx finally. Oh. Nice pop shot from Basility. But they know where he is. They're trading shots. The wing goes round. And Kenzie again removing Basility's head from his shoulders as he's looking for it again. Needs to move back into cover. The resurrection there, very risky to bring him back. Looks oh, for it again. God. Epps is now a target to flick. He's having another duel. Facility going low. Had a tag shot, both body shots. Looking for the head. And now Unfixed, still dancing around. Kenzie again onto Facility. It doesn't matter how many times you go head to head. Unfixed is even winning trades against Shaxx. Someone needs to shut him down. Emil needs to get in his face, but he can't do it. He's <laughs> running guy. riot over Orglis and Hungry. They cannot keep themselves alive to save anyone. This is why I was excited about seeing this guy play. And he gets Shax as well. You cannot stop him from getting these picks. And as you said, they need to send someone at him. They've got Tonic. They've got Emil. They've got Basility. It's still not enough. He's bringing their supports down before they can even get into position to enable the tanks to dive. Three minutes 30 on the clock. They've only got the final push to go to level this out and force out another round. They need to capture, but they've got everything to do it. Unfixed moves in with the stick. He goes for the tank. Try and get the D-Mech. Not successful on that one. As Kenzie 
needs to get this payload further down the map so he can take a more an advantageous position. At the moment, he's stuck on the back of the whim of anyone who wants to dive onto him. Eng brings Sharik back into the fight. The transcend is being popped. There's a Dragon Blade from Vizility. No one to be found. Dashing around, but swinging the blade. But it's all wet noodles for August and Hungary as there's no kill to be found. Shax finally taking someone out. The reflection onto Chow should be enough, but really, where's the kills from the Dragon Blade? Kenzie <laughs> has his number yet again. However, I think August and Hungary have done enough here, at least to force CIS Hope back temporarily. They've still got two minutes 40 to play with, though. Unfits gets dropped down by Shax, which is pretty big. No one found from that self-destruct. And now they're taking aggressive positioning to try and force back CIS Hope. They're right at the choke point and the payload is going to start moving backwards because no one's paying any attention. So gives them even more time to play with. Unfixed, changing it up again, going on to the Sombra. Kenzie going back to the Tracer because he can't get set up anywhere inside the final stage of this map. Smart idea, I think. I'd almost like to see Unfixed have gone over to the Genji here because we've seen what it can do in this final point. Lots of walls to jump over and hold behind. You can jump straight back into the fight at any given moment, especially when you've got hold of that blade. Clearly here, they're opting for this double flanking style once again. And here they are, the two troublemakers on the high ground. They've gone straight into the supports, but Shax has already removed CIS's hopes, only hope, which is their mercy in the form of Eng. Now moving back around the side, he's spotted out Unfixed. He's got nowhere to go. Going to be removed by Tonic as he calls in for the support. 1 minute 45, August and Hungry, they can do this. They can force out the fifth map in this series. They just need to burn as much time as they spent in the final stage of this map. It's heartbreaking because based on the performance from both teams so far, you would say both of these guys deserve a place in the semi-finals. Unfortunately, only one can make it. And it may be determined in this last minute and a half or so whether or not August and Hungry force the fifth or if CIS get a second chance at making, this, making the dream happen here on Dorado. They're moving all around to the high ground. They don't want to concede that over to August and Hungry. Main taking out Shaq. They've got that man advantage. Dragon Blade available for facility and the Transcendence being used prematurely. This is a perfect opportunity for Genji to jump in with the Dragon Blade and make some magic happen. They're well aware of where he is. You could see the supports already putting pressure on him as Unfix removes Tonic. The payload is in motion around the s -Bend. They're all being forced back into their spawn. Pulse Bomb goes out finds no one as Kenzie has to recall. But like we said, Basility still sat on that blade. Eng doesn't have sound barrier. There's no defensive option to shut it down. Here it comes. They're farming out with the Transcenders as well. Dragon Blade onto the tanks, but it's not enough. Dies into the back line, gets the DMX self-destruct. Forced him away, buys enough time for Chow. Here comes an EMP for Unfix to take out Epps and shut down everyone. Oh, Double big. Pulse Bomb kill from Shax. Removes the support from CIS Hope. And Tonic is going to use that edge to move back onto the Void and start pushing them back. Final push for CIS Hope and they've got 20 seconds to go. Shax is honestly unreal on this traitor. Big plays like that. We've said it all day long, as soon as we see Shaxx get in the back and bring down those supports, the CIS Hope backbone just completely falls apart. Their tank strength is in their supports, and if they are not there to provide the healing, everything falls apart for them. As you said, this is their final chance to make this work, Trid. Otherwise, we're going to map five. Overtime being used. Hover hand thrown out by Unfix. No hacks to be found as of yet. He's going to have a duel with Shaxx, but he's going to be forced out onto the cow pack. Shaq's dancing around with the recall. Epps has found Kenzie already missing a key part of their roster for CIS Hope. Unfixed, fighting onto Epps. He takes him out, so they've answered the kills, but Orders and Hungry still have a slight edge in this fight as Chow going low gets d -mech. No hacks being impactful enough. It's Dragon Blade from Vizility dives into the back line. Chow gets removed. They've done it. Orders and Hungry are taking this the full distance. Incredible play by both sides. There's, there's so much you could say about both teams, but we've said it already so far. Both of them incredibly proficient, you might say, in playing how they want to play. Kenzie, second point, all him. Shaxx really doing the work there on that final point. And it's a game of small margins. Small differences on these hero picks is making the big difference right now. With how things are going, if Shaxx keeps on playing this way, so I just hope they're going to find themselves a bit hot under the collar. I think everyone's a bit hot under the collar at the moment. Two draws in one series. Finally, August get their first map first map win, despite map being in. in the fifth map of the series now. It's absolutely incredible scenes between both of these teams. And like I said, it's a bit of a pity that only one of them can progress. The teams need a little bit of a respite before they jump into the fifth and final map. And so do we. And I'm pretty sure you guys do as well. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you the final map of August and Hungry versus CIS Hope.
Welcome back to map five of Overwatch EU contenders. It's been going on between CIS Hope and Orglis and Hungary. And I realize how odd that sounds to say map five of contenders. It's been going on for much longer than that. But anyway, two draws. The score line, one to one in the final map for best of five. We're going to be jumping onto a control map. That's as much as we know so far. And it's probably going to be a scrappy one at that because earlier on today we said Ilios, both of these teams have won 100%. Oasis, not really the most comfortable control map for most of these teams. We touched on it earlier on with Horizon Lunar Colony. Despite it being in the game for a little while now, teams still aren't as comfortable with that as they were with the original maps that came out when the game launched. So, either way you look at it, it's going to be close. It's been scrappy so far. Literally... The smallest of margins separating these two teams so far. Shaxx has been popping off. Kenzie's been popping off. Everyone's been popping off. That's what you want from a quarterfinal. You want these kind of close games, and that's what it's come to. And we have to stress, this is and will be the final map. There is no possible draw on a control map. Thank God. So, yeah, thank God. We've already <laughs> had two already this series. Not looking forward to a third. Impossible now, but we know it ends here. So this is the last chance saloon for both playoff dreams for CIS Hope and Aldous and Hungry. And you, again, it felt really weird coming into the third, fourth map. Like, surely going into the second map as CIS Hope, you're like, right, guys, one up, we can take the second map, it's fine. Third map, I'm sure we can take this as well. It's going to be fine. Coming into this map, map number five, Ilios. Both teams never lost. They are probably both feeling relatively comfortable coming into this. Again, I hate to keep saying it, it's going to be another map of small margins. And also, Widowmakers, when it comes down to Ruins, your favorite. We know who wins out of Kenzie and Facility on Dorado. But, oh, you're going to correct me here. What do you got? Somewhat, because let's not forget what the strongest showing we saw from CIS Hope was. It was when Kenzie ran the Roadhog and we saw Unfix for the first time go onto the Sombra. Their showing then was fantastic, and it feels since they've picked up that Sombra into their team on Unfixed, they have started playing more towards this triple tank whilst utilizing Unfixed on that Sombra. So I imagine that's what they'll go towards unless they feel incredibly comfortable, because based on the last map, Kenzie is having a, an on-fire day on this Widowmaker so far. We don't have to wait to find out. There's Ruins is going to be our first map of Ilios. It's the beginning of the end for one of these teams. One of them has to go home, and it's decided on Ilios. You know what this field laying out before us reminds me of? It reminds me of the first game of Contenders we cast. 
Because this is just a view I remember all of us sitting down. I think it was the, the first week was all Ilios. And it's all we saw. We were all there like, ah, oh, this is going to be a mad five weeks. We don't know what really to expect. We think Hurricane will come out on top. Giganti will be top. And then here you've got CIS Hope facing off against Orgnus and Hungary in the quarterfinals. And I wouldn't say it's too much of a surprise, both of these teams being in the quarterfinals. But it's just very reminiscent of that first week. And I think this is where we're going to see teams have to really mix things up and do something a bit different. Kenzie, as we said, Widowmaker, he was very good last map. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go towards it. But they always have that Roadhog and the Sombra in their back pocket if they need it. Let's find out if they do, Des. Final map, Ilios. First round, Ruins. And Facility opting for the Sombra while Shaxx going on to the Junkrat. What a great metaphor, really, because one team's hopes and dreams are going to end in ruins once this map is done. But Facility <laughs> going on to the Sombra. Had questions around it so far today. Hasn't looked incredibly solid, frontlining a bit too often, getting picked off in spaces where maybe it couldn't. What have you got to watch out for? Kenzie on the Widow. Well, already, Orgus and Hungry have conceded a lot of ground, allowing CIS Hope to play a little bit more aggressively and potentially get that first capture unless they're going to try and contest it at the final hurdle, which they are. They've got a touch in. Something's been triggered. I don't know who else is on this map, but Emil, he's losing his mech. So they're missing one tank. And now they can't surely contest this. And it starts going over to CIS Hope. It's just a range advantage they have. This is the thing that Widow forces is, despite being very good at getting those long-range pickoffs, is that you force the enemy team to have to act fast. They either got to dive onto you or they've got to clear out your front line incredibly quick so they can then deal with you after. So it's just a sheer presence which is actually forcing Orgnus and Hungary to make mistakes that they don't want to be making. But already, Kenzie has got that ultimate online. This is going to deny a lot of this second attack if they're not careful. Infosight's available. They know exactly where Orgnus and Hungary are going to come from. Makes it incredibly difficult when you've got two flanking DPS, one of which which relies solely on stealth to position around the map. So Facility might be having some trouble getting in. They know exactly where they are in that confined space. They're going to erupt onto the point and find Aang. That's a crucial pickup. So now they have to try and find oh. it. But Kenzie taking out Shaxx. Sharik already removing Facility. So no DPS available. CIS Hope at 50%. Still very much control of Ruins. By Emil to the grave you go. So Charles says as he chases him down. And more of the same, Shax. Give a little bit of a peppering, almost to Kenzie, just to remind him, hey man, remember I'm still here. Remember, I'm that god tier traitor that's been harassing you all day long. I will continue doing that, but not enough to kill him. And Kenzie goes, you know what? I don't even care. Bam, headshot as he tries to re-enter the point. End of Shaxx. Well, it seems like it was a little bit of Salt Bay versus Epic Meal Time. I'll let you work out which one was which <laughs> on that one in terms of their finesse when it comes to the culinary arts. The facility can use that EMP, give himself some space. One, one HP. HP backs out with the translocator. Still gets the kill, unfixed, answers with his own, with the pulse bomb. There's another one being thrown out by Shaq, and bringing Sharon back into the fight. 88% and ticking as a self-destruct, hoping to clear some space for August and Hungry. And Shaq oh, takes out main. Kenzie removing Emil's head. And now you're looking at Moira dancing around, trying to dodge shots. Finally, someone gets onto Kenzie and it's Tonic, who's in his face, using the primal rage. Eng gonna be removed. Shao with the micro missiles onto F. Shaq taking out unfixed as he moves on to the point. They still haven't captured it at 99%. This is a really sticky situation for August and Hungary. They need to get control of this point now, but they need to hold it. All it took was one opportunity for Tonic to get on top of them, pop the primal range and bring down the Mercy. That gave Kenzie kind of instilled the fear of God or the fear of Shax, as you might say, to calling at this point, just to force him away and give them a bit of room. And August and Hungary finally get the recap, but not without giving away 99% of this first round. But now August and Hungry have control, it becomes significantly harder for Kenzie to get these pop-offs because they can play around the terrain. The Ernest is on CIS Hope to jump into them. Gets a tag as the Winston's traveling through the air. Knocked off the high ground, using the grappling hook to reposition. Emil giving him a lot of attention now as Unfixed, removing Tonic from the fight. And now Kenzie gonna throw that gas grenade over to the sky. Emil with the micro-missiles, micro removing Sharik. And now Eng bringing Sharon back into the fight, negating everything that's been done from above. He's got that self-destruct sequence. He can force them out of the chokehold. He is jumping down from above at the moment, keeping himself in the in the fight as the EMP will shred through them, removing all of that semblance of abilities as the self-destruct comes out from Emil Chow. Going to be able to dance around it. It looks like CIS Hope have got control of this one. A couple more shots from Kenzie might seal the deal. If they get this cap and they deny the overtime, they will be taking ruins and going 1-0 in this series. A jump in solo by himself. Immortal, he's in range on the Lucio to get on there and keep the dream alive as Unfix takes him out. So there's no one to get on and touch the point apart from Shax dancing around. Where's the headshot? There's too many bodies for him to deal with. Overtime's going to whittle down. Is there someone to touch the point and keep it going? Emil just shy of doing it. 1-0 and oh, round point. 
the CIS hope. Series point at this stage as well. They are literally one round away from taking August and Hungary out of the competition and advancing into the semi-finals. That's just how close we have got. Now, got to say, it was all on Kenzie there. He was the one who had the advantage. Now we go into a map where you don't really favor the Widow. You look more towards things like the Pharah, which is what one of the sides is switching towards here. Unfixed. We've seen him do magical things on this hero in this very round on well. On the other side, Shax knows this. He knows what to expect. He's going to opt towards the McCree. Haven't seen too much McCree, but when we have seen it, Naga last week, we saw it earlier on today as well, big plays on it. Let's hope that Shax can carry forth some semblance of his level of skill from Tracer onto the McCree. I think they were definitely preempting the Farah. They're going to have to deal with both Kenzie's Tracer and Unfix Sombra. Yeah, we've always had question marks around Bazilla's Sombra again, and last round wasn't the most impactful. At least did some work. A bit better than what we've seen so far from him today. But maybe we'll like to see something a bit different here. Something to match unfixed if he goes towards that far once again. But they're so scared, I think, of getting each other hacked out of the sky that they're having to stick towards this Sombra. Yet again, the ISO always have control of the point early on, and he really puts the pressure on August and Hungry to react. They're not afraid to go aggressive early and make them play into them. So, 1% in ticking. August and Hungry haven't lost anyone yet. Van der Hammer into Unfixed. A lot of the shots blocked by the defense matrix, so he's going to stay alive. Very, very good defense matrix coming out of Chow there at the final second to keep his team alive. And Unfixed will find Tonic. That's the first kill in this fight. His hard work and the resources paid into him to keep him alive, paying him dividends as he gets a DMEC onto a meal and still dancing around as Kenzie goes into Shaxx. Surely Shaq should be able to shut that down if he times everything correctly. The CIS hope, 20% in ticking, ever closer to victory and playoffs. I understand why Shaq has gone for the McCree here, because it can deal with both the Sombra and the Tracer very well. But I feel in this direct matchup where you, where you have Shaq's invisibility coming up against Unfix and Kenzie on the Tracer and the Sombra, I'd say that plays in favor of Aldous and Hungry because we've already seen what Shaq's can do today on this Tracer. Why are you taking your star player, your godsend today, off of his most popular hero when you know what he can do on this? Have faith in the Orglis, have faith in Mort. They know what they're doing. Throwing the pulse bomb. No one to be found with that one. Keeping it on the payload. Shaxx moves back straight into the firing line of Kenzie as he guns him down. The D-Mech onto Chow. Not enough to bring back Orglis and Hungry into this fight. 55%, it keeps on ticking. They've got the bodies on the point though. Needing to be matched by CIS Hope. They've turned it around. Shaxx <laughs> gets booped off the side of the map. Eng doing some work as Tonic kills the sound. Make sure that everyone is a little bit muted for now as unfixed. Moving back, Immortal Hacks, he's not going to be able to dash away to safety. This should mean that Shaq should be able to pick him up. Gets him with the Goomba Stomp. But oh, Unfix he's waiting. He's being moved back, and Tonic knew exactly where Unfix was going to move to. But it's still in control. CIS Hope, 77%, and they're getting all the kills to boot. The Primal Rage, trying to give him a life. Self-Destruct, forcing him around the corner. Moving into the firing line of Kenzie as Chow gets a double kill on the Diva. Throws the possible into the room. <laughs> Cuts off the escape for Tonic. And Kenzie is giving us a masterclass in Tracer at play, sound barrier being used, 95%, and they can't get to the point. They're trying to body block Zenyatta, but they eventually get there, 98%. They're not getting on the point. Hack for Chow keeps him off. High noon, it's 12 o'clock. Will there be any kills? Can the clock strike midnight and end the Cinderella story? But CIS Hope keeping it going. EMP gonna remove Kenzie's mobility. They're getting bodies on the point. He's hacked, but he finds the health pack. 53 HP is being ran down. Orglis and Hungry, they get control of the point at 99%. We saw literally how this played out for them on Ruins, though. It came to the point where they had that one final fight, and CIS so were like, you know what? We've got room here. We are comfortable. We can fight this one back and win this round out. They are probably thinking exactly the same thing here. They've nearly got three ultimates about to come online, and the only thing Orglis and Hungry have got to their name is Immortal with that Valkyrie, and that will not last long. One fight separates CIS Hope from LAN Finals in the top four against British Hurricane. They're using the Coalescence, pivoting around the well, the EMP, the follow-up, and main guns down Tonic. The d is already there, Unfix is removing them, just need to find the Diva. she's got nowhere to go. Eng removing Shax, and they've only got a mortal in the sky. One more support, but he's being forced back. Who's on the point? It's Facility, he's gone down. Full capture, overtime, whittling down CIS Hope. They're going to face British Hurricane in the semi-finals. And your heart has to bleed at least a little bit for August and Hungary. But you've got to give it to CIS. They had them figured out in those final two rounds. Playing them off Ilios and ending that 100% win record that August and, uh, and Hungary had. But got to give it to them. They played very well. Both teams played incredibly well. Taking it to the fifth map with a 1-1 scoreline. 
that just shows you how close this series was. August and Hungary definitely played their hearts out here. And I think the biggest crime is that we can't send both of these teams to the land finals. The way the seeding worked out in the end, one of them had to go home. And unfortunately, we say goodbye to August and Hungary. But CIS Hope, they need to start prepping. They've got to go to Br against British Hurricane. That's all from us for today. We're going to take you over to our analyst and they're going to break down this series.